but isn't the strongest lead we have the Adeptilus Rite of Parting that we're organizing? No idea. <laughs> Lee's gone. Let's ask for him at Wang Shem Funeral Parlor. There's still a long road ahead. Is there anything I can do for you two? I'm afraid that Wangsheng Funeral Parlor isn't in the best state to receive guests. We've come to see Zhang Li. Could you please tell him we're here? Unfortunately, Zhang Li isn't here at the moment. It seems he went to Northland Bank. Doesn't the Northland Bank belong to the Fatui? Last time we saw Zhang Li was before we went to the Golden House. Do you think he doesn't know about the attack on Liyue? Visiting the Fatui at a time like this could only mean more trouble. We had better go and make sure that everything is okay.
You call this cooperation between Harbingers? Cooperation involves communication, you know. <laughs> Don't take it to heart, child. Besides, aren't you happy that you got to skip the formalities and bring chaos to the land? I'm sure you must have enjoyed that. Oh, it seems that some of your friends have arrived. Hey, it's Zhang Li and Child! And... You! You're also one of the Harbingers? <laughs> it's you two. I believe we've met once before. In the city of Bards, was it? I'm glad you still remember my name. Ah, right. I imagine that it must have been rather hard to forget watching helplessly as something precious was snatched away from your friend. No, don't let her get to you! You've yet to gather the powers of all seven elements, and our last battle at the Golden House was almost more than you could handle! So it might be best to keep things peaceful this time, seeing that two of the Harbingers are here. Well, if it isn't you two. This is our first time seeing each other since Liyue was nearly wiped off the map. This is certainly a bit... awkward, wouldn't you say? Hmm. Paimon knew that we should never have trusted a Fatui Harbinger. Oh, now don't say that. Sure, I may have misled you, but I never had anything against you personally. Besides, I thought we were getting along quite well together, didn't you? Except for that little tussle we had at the end. <laughs> Nothing personal. We just have... Different views, that's all. Of course, you may very well hold this against me, but that's up to you. The real deceivers here are Senora and Zhang Li. Curse them for leading me on. So actually, I think... Stop wasting time, child. There'll be plenty of time to chat once I'm through here. You remember the agreement, Morax. Now, if you would be so kind. The Gnosis, please. What in the world are you talking about? <sighs> the contract is fulfilled. That which thou seeketh is now bestowed unto thee. For my promise is solid as stone. <sighs> How sanctimonious. What? So you're the Lord of Chiyo? No, wait! That's an exciting twist and all, but why give the Gnosis to the Fatui? I do not give it for free. I give it as agreed upon in the contract. For it is a matter solely between the Tsaritsa and I. Yeah, you don't think you went a little bit too far with that whole fake death thing? Everyone was preparing the ceremony for you and splat! This big dragon falls out of the sky and all of Lyric goes into an uproar. Talk about a disaster. <laughs> Gathering all the forces that had been bubbling behind the scenes and then stirring them together in a pot that was bound to boil over. That's what he wanted to see, am I right? Wait, what? Perhaps it's best that I explain. As you know, I've dwelt upon this world for more than 6,000 years. It is now 3,700 years ago that I founded Liyue together with the Adepti. Even boulders that can withstand whirlpools will erode with the passing of time. I kept convincing myself that cracks had not begun to form, and that the end of my time had not yet come. Until one drizzly day, as I was strolling along the harbor, I heard a merchant tell one of his workers 
You finished your duties. Go ahead and call it a day. I stood motionless among the crowds, asking myself, have I already finished my duties? Oh, Zhang Li. But as I began to consider relinquishing my divine role, I soon discovered that many reasons still remained to not hastily depart. Was Liyue, the city I had dwelt in for so long, already prepared to enter its next age? I decided that a test was needed in order to reveal the answer. So I feigned my own death and gathered the cast of Child, the Adepti, and the Liu Chising to play their roles together on the stage that was Liu. Indeed I was. The Gnosis which I had kept for so many years suddenly seemed to have lost its meaning. That's right. Which is why I continued to safeguard the Gnosis until now. So you mean that if the chaos ever reached the point of no return, you would simply appear and use your divine powers to bring Lyra back under control? Of course, and it would have been all too easy for him too. Just as a child quickly matures after losing their parents, so has Liu matured when faced with the death of its deity. In the end, the resolution to all that has transpired was even more satisfactory than I could have hoped for. Take the Adepti, for instance. Owing to their years of seclusion, they were the least informed. Yet when faced with a crisis, they commendably showed the greatest amount of restraint possible. Not only did they manage to cooperate with the Qixing, but in the end, they even made efforts to understand the hearts of the people. Credit is also due to Signora, the emissary dispatched by the Cryo Archon to fulfill our contract. At my request, she kept everything she knew in strict confidence. This despite the eavesdropping ears of her colleague, Child. This meant I could remain as Zhongli, even having the chance to fulfill the age-old traditions of Liu in this mortal form. Thank you for joining me on this journey, Traveler. All of these things turned out as I had planned. There is only one thing that I had not anticipated, and that was the conduct of the Liu Qixing. I had expected them to do no more than the Adepti, to come to the defense of Liu. But when all was said and done, they seized the opportunity to supplant Liu as divine protectors, and used the subsequent power vacuum left by my death to quickly gain complete control of Liu. <laughs> On the contrary, I think it is excellent. I had always feared that it was too soon for them to take over from me. And it was also that which I longed for the most. As such, this is the best parting gift anyone could have given this god of old. Hey, what about me? Doesn't anyone feel the least bit of remorse for deceiving me? You've practically kept me in the dark! <laughs> I think that thanks would be more appropriate. You certainly played no small part in all of this. Wreaking havoc and turning the city upside down. The Lord of Geo ought to thank you for your performance, if anything. If you hadn't created the pressure of a battle between mortals, Adepti, and a god, the lump of coal resting in the hands of the Geo Archon, Liyue, would never have been able to become a dazzling diamond of a city. Huh? Just whose side are you on, mocking me like that? Are you itching for a fight? Be that as it may, you've come out of this as the hero of Liu. I, on the other hand, will be forever prescribed as a disturber of the peace, no? <laughs> well then, with the Gnosis in my possession, I have no use for such idle chatter. We should return to Zapolyarni Palace and seek an audience with Her Majesty, the Tsaritsa. Come, child. Ah, fine. I'll meet you there later. 
I'm not sharing a boat with the likes of you. <laughs> Do as you wish. Now then, is there anything else you wish to ask me? Right! As Zhang Li always told us, a good trade is a fair trade. Paimon has no idea what could be a good trade for a Gnosis. Realistically speaking, there is no such thing. Huh? However, I am the god of contracts. For thousands of years, I have made countless contracts. If the deal was of no benefit, then I certainly would not be inclined to agree to it. My agreement with the Cryo Archon will be the last of my contracts as the Geo Archon. My contract to end all contracts. As for the bargaining chip that the Tsaritsa used to balance the scales, uncover that answer for yourself in your future journeys. Board on the road. You know that god from the ocean couldn't have just shown up out of nowhere. I mean, it's been 2,000 years since Rex Lapis subdued it. Yes, and to think that this happened right on the heels of the incident with Rex Lapis, too. Say, do you think the person who assassinated our lord and released that evil god might have been one and the same? Now that you mention it, that's very possible. Yes, it's very possible indeed. I mean, it all fits together. That person must have colluded with the evil god to harm Rex Lapis. Oh, that wicked, black-hearted scoundrel. Still, what sort of supernatural prowess must this person possess to be able to do such things? I have never heard of such a person in all my years. Ah, forget it. Guessing's no use to us. Look, the Millilith over there looks like he's about to make an announcement. Let's hear what the Ministry of Civil Affairs has to say first. Please be mindful of your personal safety. Uh, what if Master finds out? <sighs> <sighs> Well, since we're going through with this rite of parting, I guess it means that those rumors hit the nail on the head. Uh, so Rex Lapis is really... <sighs> but they didn't catch the culprit, did they? Oh, come on. Do you think that the assassin could have been a normal person? You know what I think. I don't think any of the gossip on the streets you hear from those shady types is worth anything. There's only one real possibility in my mind. I've heard that the assassin was that Fatui fellow. Youngish, pretty high in rank. I think they called him child. The Fatui? Hmm. They certainly are very suspicious. 
Who knows what those greedy, crooked folks... Shh! Lower your voice. If the Fatui catch you in their sights, Rex Lapis won't be around to protect you this time. Hear ye all, the Chi Sing's words. Though a dragon soars ageless as the mountains, it too must return to dust. This is common knowledge. Gods and Adepti live glorious lives, but both light and shadow have their season. So, too, must they face divinely appointed trials. Rumors and hearsay abound on the streets that Rex Lapis was murdered. Now, let the truth be revealed. Having been thwarted in his trial, Rex Lapis's soul has recouped the celestial heights. He beseeches the people of Lyra to grieve not and to let not their hearts be saddened. Nor are they to believe street-born rumors or indulge in baseless speculation. Uh, um, Daimon needs a translation on what the Chi Sing's announcement said. <sighs> so that's how they're spinning it. Something feels off. Why would they suddenly give up looking for the murderer? Not to mention how this excuse sounds like something they just made up on the spot. Could the Chi-Sing already have known that Rex Lapis wasn't dead? But Zhang Li said that neither they nor the Adepti knew anything. Hmm... Did Zhang Li tell them in secret after his Gnosis changed hands? Right? Ooh, seems like the right of farting has been going on for a while now. Let's go have a look. Previously, Rex Lapis's soul returning to the heavens is the end of the contract, and it is also the end of an era. 3,700 years of contracts burnt and reduced to ash. We, the people of Liyue, were indeed prosperous, but blinded by our prosperity, we forgot that time can be pitiless. The long, unending dream of our Archon walking among us. Hmm. Now that we have awoken from our dream, we must learn to say farewell. Will you stand with us as we re-establish our contracts? As we build a new age of prosperity? So concludes the words of Her Eminence the Tianquan. Does Her Eminence the Yuhang have anything to add? Huh? Is she looking this way? Traveler. Yikes! She really is looking our way! Is that the Traveler who they say defeated the ancient god? So young! The Liyue Qixing always repay their debts. And as you have heard, our eyes see far and our reach is long. Name your price. You deserve that much. Whoa! Mm. 
Well, could you help me put up some missing person posters? <laughs> Why you? Were you just trying to look cool earlier, or are you really that selfless? If you were looking for someone, you could have just told me that in private. The cleanup of the premises, managing the crowds as they exit, making an account of the right? There's much that remains to be done. I didn't miss anything, did I? <laughs> Why, you... Were you just trying to look cool early? If you were looking... Roping you in was possibly the most masterful move we could have made. I believe that future generations will say so too when our deeds come up for their review. thinking that they'll never see Rex Lapis again. And here you are looking all relaxed. <laughs> Why would I not feel more at ease after laying down the burden I have borne for 3,700 years? Right. If the two of you can spare the time, I should treat you to a meal at the Shinya kiosk. Ha! <laughs> that sounds like big talk, Zhongli. Paimon might have believed you if you were treating us to some third-round knockout, but you'd have to pay out your nose just to stand inside Shinyue Kiosk. Are you sure you can afford it? Hmm... You're right. <laughs> I do like the Mora. But why would Morax lack Mora? As the Rex Lapis Morax, I can easily create Mora. But since I have chosen to walk this earth as the mortal Zhongli, I should abide by the same rules that mortals do. When I was journeying with you, though I still had the Gnosis in hand, I knew that I must soon retire from my role as an Archon. So I had to... rehearse a little for my new life. Oh, no wonder! Paimon gets it now! You didn't look at the price tags when we were spending because you've never had to. But since you weren't used to not being able to just make more Mora as and when you wanted to, you had to try becoming a parasite to society who lives off of other people's credit. Well, we were only spending Fatui money. You don't have to say it like that. In the City of Commerce, we do not merely exchange money or goods. We also exchange knowledge, memories, and foresight, as well as positions, roles, and lives. The Archon Morax could never experience life as the true mortal Zhongli could, no matter how many times he descended to be with his people. <laughs> I must thank you for that. I will treasure the memories that I made as Zhongli, traveling the streets of Liyue with you. That is true, but there is no journey that does not end. No meetings without partings. Hmm. Paimon thinks that we should make a move and continue our search for the Seven. I fear that continuing your journey may be difficult. The nation that neighbors Liyue by sea in Azuma is presently closed. Yes, the nation has been closed by order of its deity. The Electro Archon Ball. And just as the people of Liyue preferred to call me Rex Lapis, she too goes by another name among locals in Inazuma. Um, Paimon thinks we've heard that one before. 
for? Uh, right, Raiden? That is the case. And since Raiden is also the Shogun of Inazuma, people call her the Raiden Shogun. That said, though people at the wharf were saying that the situation in Inazuma is very tense, Paimon doesn't remember that always being the case. It wasn't that bad last year. Zhongli, since you're Rex Lapis, shouldn't you know something about what's happening there? Just how did Inazuma become a closed nation? It's because of visions. Visions? When faced with circumstances beyond their control, humans often bemoan their lack of power. But if a person shows true strength of will at a desperate and fateful moment in their life, the gods will look upon them with favor. This is what visions are. Magical foci bestowed upon those who have been acknowledged by the gods. Uh-huh. That's how people in Tevat see it. But starting from last year, the Raiden Shogun began promulgating the Vision Hunt Decree. Vision Hunt Decree? Yes. It was an order to seize all visions within Inazuma's borders, and to inlay them upon the hands of the statue of the Omnipresent God. They want to seize visions? But why? Aren't visions blessings from the gods? I should think that in the Raiden Shogun's eyes, it is precisely because they are divine blessings that they should be under the sole dominion of divinity. Whoa, that's harsh. The Animo Archon is the god of freedom, and the Geo Archon is the god of contracts. For her part, the Raiden Shogun is the god of eternity. It seems as though she has finally decided to eliminate any unstable elements that could pose a threat to her eternal realm. The fact that even I, the oldest of the seven have now passed away, will only strengthen her resolve to pursue eternity. Knowing her, she must have again quoted that adage she is most fond of when proclaiming that decree to her people. Seven ideals for seven gods. And of these, eternity is nearest unto the heavenly principles. All right then, was there anything else you wished to know? <laughs> ah, that was a good one. Failing a divine trial. How they came up with that excuse, I will never know. That said, the reason why the Chi-Sing were so eager to resolve the incident and stop pursuing the culprit was indeed because they received news in secret that Rex Lapis was not dead. I hinted as much to the Adepti as well. How did I accomplish that, you ask? Hmm. Have you ever heard of this particularly convenient Adepti art known as gifting dreams and visions? All right then. Was there anything else you wished to know? These are indeed false accusations, but it remains undeniably true that Child did send people to the Jade Chamber to prevent the Adepti and the Chi-Sing from defeating the ancient god. I've heard that Ningguang is busy milking that for all it's worth on the foreign relations front at the moment, browbeating the envoys of the Fatui. Ha! <laughs> Those poor Snezhnayan diplomats. If it were not for Child's exalted position as a harbinger, I'm certain that they would have shifted all the blame to him and called for his dismissal by now. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? The time of the Adepti has long passed. If even the Liu Chising don't want to face that truth, then what future is there for Liu? Kuching is absolutely right in saying this. Now, Though I did laud Ningguang's desire for power, believing this to be a good thing, and thought as a matter of course that she must have been behind the Qixing's plan 
to take governing power over Liyue from the hands of the gods and Adepti. Could the original person who brought up the idea of seizing power have been... Hmm... All right, then. Was there anything else you wished to know? present now will not vanish, but the Golden House will indeed have to cease operations for a lengthy period of time, since creating Mora requires the use of the Geo Archon's power. This is terrible! We're all about to run out of Mora! The world is coming to an end! Yes, this is indeed a major issue from a financial standpoint. Uh, well, I suppose we'll just leave such troublesome matters to the Liu Chising to debate. Then, did you at least set some private funds aside for yourself? Oh, a private fund. Hmm. This does seem like a good logical common sense idea. <sighs> it's a shame. What's a shame? It's a shame that I didn't think of it at the time. All right then. Was there anything else you wish to know? Well then, I suppose you'll have to find a way to get inside this closed nation. Have patience. I suspect that some serendipity must first come into play.
Traveler, please, over here. It has been a while since you joined the Adventurer's Guild. Are your adventures going smoothly? Hmm, is that so? Apart from your own skills, reliable teammates are also indispensable when adventuring. Another person to count on is always good after all. But recruiting such dependable companions is no easy matter, is it? Yep, and it's even harder to get a guide as good as Paimon. Ah, yes. I do have some information that may be of help to you. Let me consult our records. Ah, there it is. There's been a certain blonde stranger who arrived in Mondstadt lately, dressed in most unusual clothes. Blonde. Dress is all funny. It feels like Paimon's heard this one before. Wait! Do you mean... Does that stranger's face look anything like his? Hmm? Like the honorary knights? No, they couldn't look more different. This stranger is a very tall man, and even has an eye patch. Seriously? <laughs> How does this have anything to do with Kaya? I just can't prove that you're related anyway. That stranger declined the guild's invitation, so I can't say that I know anything about the relationship between him and Mr. Kaya. Nonetheless, you can look for him if you're interested. Perhaps he might accept your commission instead. After all, it is not uncommon for some adventurers to not want to be limited by the guild, but be happy to accept a fellow adventurer's requests. And should the stranger be a strong adventurer indeed, he would certainly be a big help on your journey. Please don't talk down on yourself like that. You are the honorary knight of the Knights of Favonius, after all. Your deeds are the stuff of song for all the bards in the city, even now. Well, as to further news about him, you may want to ask Mr. Lawrence. He stands guard at the city gate, so he may know something about that stranger. I wish you every success, adventurer. Everyone can hear your voice. Uh, honorary knight is something the a uh, stranger with an eye patch. Hmm, let me think. Oh yeah, I remember seeing someone like that. A blonde stranger dressed in unusual garb. He was wandering all over Mondstadt at first, which I found rather suspicious. So I decided to keep an eye on him for a while. Uh, I lost him pretty quickly. Still, I didn't think that this was such a huge matter that we needed our outrider to pursue him by air. 
As long as Master Jean is here, there's nothing to fear from some suspicious, unusual-looking person. That might be true, but if it were up to Jean, she'd take this way more seriously. <laughs> that is true. But on the other hand, knowing that Master Jean may overreact to the situation is all the more reason to not tell her, no? <sighs> Anyways, oh yeah, he was at Wagner Smithy for a while before I tried telling him. He might have said something to Wagner. You should go ask him. Maybe he has more news about our stranger. something? Here. I remember him. He showed up a few days ago asking to buy a bunch of forging materials. Can't say I've heard of any of the materials he mentioned, though. He then had a look at the weapons in my shop before leaving. I've heard that he can be found drinking at the Angel's share. If the Knights of the Guild want to get hold of him, that's the only place to be. <laughs> Share? Well, Master D. Luke probably has his eye on that stranger, too, then. Anyway, let's go to the Angel Share and have a look. Hard work is all there is to the craft. My strength still fails me. What will it be? Grape juice or apple cider? That I have. He comes here every night. Just a drink, though. Doesn't order anything else. He even sometimes mixes his own drinks after he orders them. I don't know anything else about him, but from his selections and mixes, I'd say that he's quite the connoisseur. And what's Master D. Luke's opinion? Why, I just gave it to you. Quite the connoisseur. Investigating everything as always. Guess that's D. Luke for you. If you're looking for that gentleman, he ordered some new bottle of wine in advance yesterday. So he should be here today, too. There's too many raucous patrons on the first floor, so if you want to wait, best to go to the second. Welcome, sir. The wine that you previously ordered is here. Do 
He's really here? Let's go downstairs and have a look. Uh, I can't give up. I need to learn to handle my booze better. Even if you are a close friend. <sighs> No intention of paying us any mind, huh? A traveler, you say? <laughs> Why are you traveling? <sighs> well, that's as good a reason as any. Sit down over there, then. So... Guess we've broken the ice. What a weird guy. Hmm. That little one beside you. Uh-huh. We're the best of friends. It's indeed a good thing to have someone accompany you on your travels. My name's Dainsliff. I suppose you have some business with me? Sure. And he was so cold just a moment before. Hyman's got a bad feeling about this. But I will require advance payment. 500 mora, and three answered questions. The 500 is a one-time fee, and we'll settle the questions in a moment. That's it. Well, now Paimon's got a really bad feeling. That kind of compensation can't be right. Ah, thank you. Now, as for my questions, I'd like you to answer them here and now. The answer to a question says nothing about right and wrong, only about differences in attitude. I only wish to know what your choices are. You need only answer. Question one. The crisis Mondstadt faced was resolved by an alliance between yourself and that Animo Archon who calls himself Venti. Who, in your view, was the key to ending that crisis? I know everything that I should. <laughs> well, answer the question. Is that your answer? Hm, I see. Question number two. Rex Lapis, who has defended Liyue Harbor for millennia on end, used his gnosis to lay down a contract to end all contracts, of which the stipulations are still unknown. Who do you think will defend Liyue Harbor in the future? now that they've lost their deity. So that's your answer? I see. Now for my final question. This world has people who gained visions, and those who did not. Which of the two do you think hold more importance in the eyes of the gods? So, this is your answer then. <laughs> I understand. It seems that you're different from her. <laughs> I'll take that 500 mora. And now I also understand your views on this world. As we agreed, you may now commission me. That said, 
I only take commissions related to the Abyss Order. Like you, I am currently on a journey. You intend to find your sibling, while I wish to oppose the Abyss. Ugh. Those creatures that serve the Abyss are the fangs and claws by which the Order spreads chaos in this world. I have come to Mondstadt this time while on the trail of an Abyss Herald. An Abyss Herald? An even more twisted Abyssal being, one that commands the Abyss Mages. Oh, that's right! We've just been fighting against the Fatui and Lile, who are human too! We haven't encountered the non-human Abyss Order at all! There's some reason behind that, I'm afraid. It's possible that they may have been under orders to avoid your path. Oh, that does sound pretty dangerous. <gasps> Maybe they're looking for a better time to ambush us or something. Uh-huh. We're super duper strong. That manner, it's just like hers. Well then, let's go see for ourselves, shall we? According to the leads I have on hand, the Abyss Order has re-infiltrated the Temple of the Falcon. Let's meet up at the temple. Perhaps your questions about the Abyss will be answered there. The lion, what would you like? <laughs> <laughs> I say. 